The topic that um, I was going to be addressing at ELCC was uh, about the role of immune checkpoint inhibitors in patients who have EGFR mutations. EGFR mutations, um, of course, are a significant issue in non-small cell lung cancer. In Western populations, uh, approximately 10% of patients uh, with non-small cell lung cancer do have an EGFR mutation, uh, but that number is much higher in uh, Asian populations. The, uh, the truth is that to date we have had a difficult time integrating immune checkpoint inhibitors into uh, the frontline therapy or any therapy in patients who have um, EGFR mutations. Um, some of that is, uh, is good news in that uh, this group of patients responds so well to frontline EGFR inhibitors that um, it makes other approaches less relatively appealing than would be the case for, for um, patients who do not have EGFR mutations. However, um, it is still difficult because it is a group that in general has not derived tremendous benefit um, from this. We, in our initial evaluation from Keynote 001, uh, for instance, had a large number of uh, patients with EGFR mutations who received single-agent pembrolizumab, and overall the efficacy results were disappointing. Um, as part of that, we actually saw a, a surprisingly good result in patients who had not received prior EGFR TK. So we actually ran a study at our institution looking at patients who um, had an EGFR mutation uh, and had a PDL1 expression as to the role of frontline PD1 inhibition with pembrolizumab. Uh, my colleague uh, Aaron Lisberg now has uh, published that data, and it was it was roundly disappointing. Uh, and leading to a, a very clear conclusion that uh, patients should not receive uh, PD-1 inhibitor as their initial therapy in this setting. Um, one concerning uh, finding in our study there was that there was one patient who actually had only received a single dose of pembrolizumab, um, then went on to receive an EGFR inhibitor and had pneumonitis. There now have been uh, several reports in the literature to indicate potentially higher likelihood of uh, immune-related adverse events in patients who would start a, an EGFR tyrosine kinase inhibitor after a PD-1 inhibitor. And so that has led to some pause uh, a, a, a across all of us. Now, um, there are multiple different studies that are evaluating uh, the integration of chemoimmunotherapy specifically in EGFR mutation positive patients. I would say the most data that we have to date addressing this topic comes from the Empower 150 uh, study. This study um, was uh, powered really to look at patients who did not have an EGFR mutation, but there was a per protocol analysis for patients who had um, received uh, prior EGFR TKI directed therapy, and that group of patients was uh, treated per protocol. And what was seen was that um, there were numerically at least uh, clear advantages um, to the combination of four drugs in this setting, uh, carboplatin, paclitaxel, bevacizumab, and atezolizumab. Um, at, compared to when uh, regimens that just used three of the drugs were, were, were looked at. And so that is something that, uh, at least in the United States, the NCCN uh, lists as a possibility, but there is no regulatory approval, at least in the United States, and I think elsewhere as well, um, for this regimen in EGFR mutation positive patients. So uh, I think in summary as to where we stand with integration of immunotherapy in EGFR mutation positive patients, um, I think that it is still an area where we are learning a great deal um, and it is still an area that I think we don't have a great solution um, and one that hopefully there will be um, improvements on in future years.